This Joseph Henry Sharp oil portrait, circa 1900, is from the guest with an interesting background story about its painter. It's been in her father-in-law's house since 1946. It's a framed painting of a Native American, which has not been opened. It looks like the girl is Tao's Indian. The portrait was probably painted around 1900. A closer look reveals it's painted by J.H. Sharp, an American painter. It's rated as an A-plus painting. The painting is estimated to be valued between fifty and seventy thousand dollars. I can't believe it. That's amazing. This oil painting is a 1927 William Klusman, which the guest inherited from her aunt. It's the painting of the Art Institute of Chicago, with the lions and steps as landmarks. The artist is William Klusman, who was born in Indiana and he later attended the Art Institute of Chicago. The painting is generally in good condition with American flags. It's estimated to be valued between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, and the insurance value is between seventy five and eighty thousand dollars. Wow, needs to be insured. <laughs> this watch, along with its matching chatelaine, was a cherished piece in the guest grandmother's antique shop. It was kept safe by her husband, Ernie, the watchmaker and tinkerer. Admired for its exquisite craftsmanship, the watch dates back as early as 1780 and possibly as late as 1820. It's a men's dress pocket watch reserved for the grandest occasions, adorned with shag green on the back and embellished with seed pearls and guilloche enamel. The chatelaine is a rare find to accompany the watch and it attaches securely to the waistband completing the elegant ensemble. Oh, and that's the watch itself, um, uh, which was very well made, and it, 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 it is signed as well. The appraiser, while admiring its condition and matching accessories, values the watch and chatelaine combination at about $7,500. But on a good day, because of its condition and things, it could bring a price a little higher. This man inherited these two remarkable miniature portraits painted on mahogany panels with oil paints. The portraits, dated 1840 and 1841, were created by artist E. S. Goddard in Georgetown, Kentucky. The subjects are Henry James Osborne, born in 1820, and Susan Garrett Osborne, born in 1824. The paintings show intricate details, including landscapes, draperies, and skies, making them stand out despite their small size. The portraits have never been displayed and are missing their original frames. Impressed by their rarity and quality, the appraiser suggests a minimum auction estimate of eight to ten thousand dollars for the pair. If I were you, I would probably insure them for fifteen or twenty thousand dollars wow. a pair. Oh, wow! <laughs> Great. This guest enjoys collecting ocean liner memorabilia. He prefers items from the Queen Mary liner over those from other ships. Well, I love the Queen Mary ab above all others. Mm -hmm. She has a special place for me. The first item is a telephone from one of the ship's first-class rooms. This was purchased for under $400. The second item is the launch booklet from before the ship was named Queen Mary. Queen Mary was famous as 534 before its launch. Other items include a study of the Queen Mary an onboard booklet, and a maiden voyage souvenir booklet. The guest paid $60 to $70 for each of these items. He bought this shipbuilder for $120. The centerpiece of the collection is Chad Valley Toy. This opens up, rotates to show every deck, and is very detailed. The Chad Valley Toy can be sold for $12,000, and the telephone can get $1,500. And collectively, all items estimated value can be over $4,000. I couldn't afford it now. <laughs> the owner brought in an 18th century English Georgian pitcher that has been in the family for generations, initially owned by the owner's great, 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 great grandmother. This piece is adorned with the monogram E.H., representing Eliza Hungerford. An old photograph of the owner's great-great-grandfather's house shows the pitcher in a prominent position. The hallmarks under the base indicate that it was made in London in 1771 by the well-known silversmith Charles Wright. The pitcher is a rare form used for display on a sideboard, accompanied by a basin for rinsing. 
The lion's mask decoration under the spout adds to the piece's uniqueness. This item has a collector's value of around $10,000. Wow. The guest shared the interesting story of acquiring a puppet at a live auction. It was bought for just $5. The puppet turned out to be a Winnie the Pooh ventriloquist dummy. It's fantastic. It's, it's, the resemblance to Winnie is just absolutely amazing. Resembling the Winnie the Pooh from the 60s Disney movie. The appraiser admired the professionally made ventriloquist dummy, noting its uniqueness. The item's construction showed that it wasn't mass-produced. Considering its appeal, the value was estimated to range between four to six hundred dollars. <laughs> Perfect. The guest shared an intriguing tale about a distinctive elk chair crafted by her great-grandfather. That he shot the animals and then had it made into a chair in Wyoming. This chair serves as a tangible reminder of his bravery and adventurous spirit. The appraiser acknowledged the chair as a remarkable trophy. Additionally, the guest brought along their grandfather's woolies, which he wore as a child. Because of the chair's rare and unique nature, the overall estimated value for the items ranged between seven to $10,000. This uniform belongs to a World War II veteran. He was a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne. The guest and her family feel deeply attached to her late father's uniform. He earned medals like the Army Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the World War II Victory Medal, and more. He participated in operations such as Operation Market Garden in Holland. His parachutist uniform is in rough condition but it indicates his involvement in various battles. His jacket is in good condition. Here are his paratrooper boots as well. You're looking at a retail value today in the neighborhood of $3,500 to $4,000. Oh, cool. All right. This guest brings this beautiful pair of Delaware moccasins, which was given to her by her great aunt to the show. These moccasins are believed to be made by the Delaware Indians. A Native American tribe, also called Lenin Lenape, who were initially in the Northeast before they migrated to Ohio, Kansas, and then Oklahoma, their final settlement ground. They're believed to be made in the Oklahoma, Kansas area in the 1860s to 1700s. They're very beautiful moccasins. They're made from deer skin with European glass trade beads and European silk. The appraiser values them at... These would probably bring in the vicinity of six to $7,000. Really? A playtime treasure of yesteryear makes its way to the show. The Ives Kuzner Trotter toy belonged to the guest father. The toy dates back to the 1870s and was made by the Ives Toy Company. It belongs to the American clockwork category of toys made by the company called the Kuzner Trotter because Mr. Kuzner was the man who patented the mechanism that gave the realistic trotting mechanism. It's a revolutionary piece, as previous horses were static. This was very unusual in that when, you, when the wheels were turned and the clockwork, the horse would move his legs in a very realistic fashion. The toy, which is over 140 years old, is still in remarkable shape with original clothing, uh, the paint on the head of, this, of the jockey is extraordinary. The paint on the horse is just amazing. There's a little bit of paint loss on the legs. That's certainly to be expected. The appraiser values it at... At auction, maybe bring seventy-five to $9,500 and... Uh, maybe even get back to the 10 or 12 number. So. <laughs> In 2012, the value fell to two to $4,000. What do you think the value will be today? Let us know in the comments section. The guest brings a piece of clothing signed by a famous person to the show. The sarong, which was signed by Dorothy Lamore, was done when the guest grandfather and his battery met her when they were stationed in Pearl Harbor around 1940. Dorothy L'Amour was a singer and actress famous for her role in the Road 2 movies, starring alongside actors Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. 
She is tagged the sarong girl after her role in the movie The Jungle Princess, where she wore a sarong. The appraiser has this to say about the authenticity of the piece. We always say get something that shows provenance. You can't get anything better than pictures of Dorothy actually signing the sarong. It is valued at... I think it has a value at auction of between $2,500 and $3,000. Wow. This lovely vase was believed by the guests to be made by Lewis Comfort Timpany. It is, however, made by the company Let's. This mistake is common, as many Let's pieces were passed as Tiffany's by some unsavory characters at the time. Now, this was really easy to do, because a lot of times, Lotz is unsigned, as is your piece. Also, Let's and Tiffany made many similar pieces. In fact, sometimes we're not sure whether Tiffany went to some of these world expositions and saw Lotz, or whether Lotz went to exhibitions and saw things that Tiffany was making. This piece is made of iridized glass. You have these wonderful raindrop spots that almost resemble butterfly wings. In fact, that is the term that Lotz used for this type of glass. It's a very nice Art Nouveau piece made around the 1900s. The appraiser values it about... And I would probably put a value of three to $4,000 on this piece. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's fabulous. That's, nice. that's fabulous. Good. My mother would be so pleased. Well, good. In 2014, the value dropped to about fifteen to twenty-five hundred dollars. How much do you think it's valued in today's market? Let us know in the comments. The clothing ensemble reflecting fashion at a certain time. The flapper ensemble belonged to the guest great aunt, who was a buyer for bullocks in the 1920s. The rare ensemble shows the unique style of dressing at that time. The mixture of colors and designs contributes to giving an exquisite yet simple piece. The all-American-made ensemble consists of the lovely green leather gloves, a beautifully designed mesh bag made by Whiting and Davis, the leather shoes, cloche, and the dress. I love the dress. The silk was created here in America, and it was actually created in a very simple design. So with only a few cuts, you could actually make the dress. The appraiser values it at... value today, fair market value, would be somewhere between $1,200 and $1,500. Oh, my for goodness. For the, the complete ensemble. Wow, that's cool. This clock, which was made in 1890, has been passed down from generation to generation. I just admired it as a kid. And I guess the story is it hung in her great-grandfather's bar in Ohio before it came to her, and then she passed it down to my mother and it ended up in my hands. This clock was perfectly crafted by the Seth Thomas Clock Company in 1890. The label on the bottom indicates its former name. It's unusual, and it's a beautiful clock. It runs for 30 days on one winding. The hole on the side suggests that it was a master clock and ran other clocks as well. Despite its old age, the clock is still in fine condition. It's a beautiful original mahogany case clock. Its retail price can be between eighteen to twenty-two hundred dollars. Yeah, so it's, it's a, not bad. It's not bad. The guest bought this living room set online for just sixty dollars. The set is designed by Danish furniture designer Hans Olsen. He studied in Denmark at the Royal Danish Academy. This set was manufactured in 1957. It's a style based on its minimalism and its function and its simplicity. It's made of teak wood with wicker in the back. This furniture is flexible and can be shaped into many forms. We've had it in an L shape like this, so it's really just extremely flexible and it fits you know, a lot of different uses in our homes. Its chairs can be separated and it can be used as a day bed. Its flexibility and informality make it desirable for people to buy it even nowadays. Its estimated value at auction can range from $1,000 to $2,500. Auction estimate would be $1,000 to $2,500. And probably closer to the high, you can find retail sales above that. It's great. The guests purchased posters from the 1930s Works Progress Administration period in America. The posters were obtained from two elderly ladies, and two of them were signed. 
Dating back to 1936 to 1941, the WPA employed thousands of artists to produce posters. It was the way for unemployed artists in America during the Depression to find some work. It was really a great program that benefited America as a whole. Despite their significance, few posters have survived due to silkscreen printing on board. The guest had a total of six posters, and they are in quite good condition. Due to the poster's popularity in America, the estimated value ranged between ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Well, that is very exciting news. This guest brought in two pieces of painting from a renowned expressionist artist, Katha Klovitz, who purchased them in about 1947 in Heidelberg, Germany. The man inherited the pieces from his godmother, who purchased them for five marks a piece in about 1947 Germany. The first piece is an etching that depicts a brooding woman sitting under the church wall, which is believed to be from 1921. The second one is a pen and ink drawing of a self-portrait that was executed somewhere around the 1920s or 1930s. Astonishingly, there is a contrasting value in Kate the Clovid's print and drawing. The auction price for the print is around $5,000, while the self-portrait is worth around $50,000. Today, she's incredibly well known. Her work is very well sought after. Major collections and museums. One of the patients of the guest father had many dolls and gave one to the guest. It's the guest favorite doll. The doll's name is Just Me, and it was created by Armand Marcel. On the back, you will see Germany. There's an A and an M, and that stands for Armand Marseille. The mark with 310 is the doll's mold number. It's a very popular model, and the Vogue Doll Company still creates dolls of this model. The doll is exceptionally beautiful, with realistic eyes, mouth, cheeks, and wig. Its wig is made of animal fur, but looks like human hair. It looks so original. Even the costume, including the shoes, lace, hat, suit, and pantaloons, look real. It was made in 1925. Yet, it's still popular. Doll collectors still appreciate this model. It can be easily sold for twelve to $1,600. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That's so cute. Imagine how lucky you could be to have two paintings of your great-great-great-grandparents that were painted in 1826. This guest brought these two pieces to the show after being gifted by a lady who found out he was the direct descendant of the Mabane family in North Carolina. The unique folk art is a self-portrait portraying David and Elizabeth Mabane's lives and was painted by an unidentified artist among the then Guilford County Limner. The two paintings are watercolors on paper with distinct characteristics of a straight-up face with large eyes and eyelashes. The conservative estimate of this pair of paintings would be around twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and in some cases might rise to forty thousand dollars. Well, so uh, I hope my family is listening. <laughs> <laughs> a woman who is lucky to have nurtured a close friendship with a family closely linked to Charles Laloma came to the show with a painting, a ring, and a bracelet that was among the Charles Laloma collection. The bracelet and ring were originally made for the guest friend, who sold them to her for about $3,500 back in 1975. Charles Laloma was an important artist and jewelry designer who was renowned for her cluster work with precious and semi-precious stones. The bracelet is quite an unusual one that stands out for its beautiful turquoise setting in gold and a molted silver background with a signed inscription of Laloma inside. The ring is a beautiful gold ring with a rare gemstone that was among the best at the time. In today's auction world, the bracelet is valued at around twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. The ring would auction for four to six thousand dollars, while the print should fetch around twelve to sixteen hundred dollars. Wow! In today's market. <laughs> oh, gee. These precious pair of whale teeth have journeyed through generations. The owner's great-grandfather was a ship's captain from New England. He likely picked it up as a souvenir from one of the ports. We can see spectacular lady and gentleman on the front. 
The backside shows whalers heading out with harpoons, with birds flying above. The other one depicts whalers actually encountering a whale, highlighting the danger of this job. These wonderful polychrome teeth are from 1840. The estimated value is between $100 to $150,000. Sound good? Yep, family's proud. Good. The guest brought a curved dash old toy car created in 1903, which she inherited from her father. It has the Big A logo to showcase it was originally designed by Acme. Inspired Curve Dash Oldmobile product, which is one of the earliest automobile manufacturers in the United States. There is a prestige feel about the Oldmobile toy car, including rubber tires, beautiful enamel, and a fascinating look. The old toy car is valued at $800 or more. Posters, those colorful snapshots of history, hold a special place in the world of collectors. And this particular gem, acquired from a high school art teacher's father-in-law who had an eye for unique finds, is no exception. Dating back to World War II, it's not just any circus poster. It's a grand four-sheet spectacle, larger than life and bursting with character. What sets this poster apart is not just its size, but its journey through time. Printed by the prestigious Strobridge Litho Company, it boasts craftsmanship that collectors covet. But the real intrigue lies in its adaptation. Originally showcasing the legendary animal trainer Terrell Jacobs, it later underwent a makeover to feature Alfred Court. The curious addition of a separate paper clumsily concealing Jacobs' name tells the tale of an ever-evolving circus world where performers' careers took unexpected turns. Despite its historical significance and imposing presence on any wall, this poster has remained somewhat elusive in auction circles. Nonetheless, expert appraisers foresee a conservative estimate of three to $4,000, turning this historical gem into a thrilling investment. Good. Books are treasures of knowledge, holding captivating stories beyond their pages. Such is the case with this fishing book, a collection of Wright Mary Garlands for North County Anglers, brought forth by the guest. With ties to literary figures Eugene Field and Frederick Remington, it promised an amazing journey into the past. It also contained sketches by Frederick Remington and a watercolor drawing adding to its allure. Although accompanied by a note from Eugene Field II and a bookseller's price of $350, doubts were cast upon their legitimacy. Eugene Field Jr. had a reputation as a skilled forger and was known for embellishing books from his father's collection. He used names like Mark Twain and Frederick Remington to fetch higher prices. Ultimately, the authentication served as a disendorsement, revealing the items as likely forgeries. The book still holds a value as a collectible forgery, fetching around two to three hundred dollars from enthusiasts. So it's not a complete loss, <laughs> okay. and I hope it's not too disappointing. No, not at all. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. The guest came to the show with a golden bracelet that was given to her after her grandmother died. The mystery behind the bracelet unfolded when she was given a letter that linked the bracelet to the last queen of Hawaii, Lily Ukalani who gave it to her grandmother's aunt in 1891. The golden bracelet has a classic motif with beautiful tassel work and elite patina. Assessing the value that was backed by the letter she held, the golden bracelet is worth around ten dollars to $20,000 in today's market value. This circa 1720 Japanese Buddhist painting was brought to the show by an old man who said he got the painting from his ex-wife. Initially, the painting was purchased in 1984 by his ex-wife's aunt from Japan. The painting depicts a man named Shakyamuni who was referred to as the Buddha and was surrounded by his family, attendants, and guardian figures who are protecting him. Titled the Rego Painting, which was done by anonymous painters who painted on silk with natural pigments like minerals and vegetables and a great deal of gold leaves. 
With the excellent condition and the rarity of such paintings, the painting auction value ranges between eight to ten thousand dollars. Well, I thank you for what you've done. I didn't have any idea, and you know what? I was going to sell it to buy a new horse because I'm a cowboy guy. But since talking to you, I think no, it's better I just keep it. I think it. you should keep it. I will keep it. This silk embroidery quilt was brought to the show by a woman who claims the piece was passed down to her by her grandmother. Interestingly, the quilt was initially given as a token of appreciation to her great-grandmother, who harbored the Chinese immigrant whose house got burnt during the Seattle fire outbreak in 1889. The remarkable quilt has a backing that was made with a Chinese silk handkerchief and two carved embroidery. The current market value of the silk embroidery crazy quilt will be around $10,000. <laughs> That. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> the guest brought a Japanese panel screen that he inherited. Although his brother inherited the piece from his parents who purchased them around 1920, he had to demand it from his brother to have them in custody. The wonderful large format painting was from the Emperor Taishoi period from 1912 to 1926. The design of this painting shows the interaction between Western art and Japanese art. Despite the fading and restoration that was done to the paintings, it still retains a hefty market value of around seven to ten thousand dollars. I'm glad I brought this here. Thank you very much for Thank bringing you. it into us. The guest brought this beautiful dressing table garniture that she inherited from her mother to the show. Actually, the dresser garnitures were acquired by her father, who was a doctor in Ohio, and presented them to her mother as a token of love. The dressing table garniture was made by a renowned French jeweler and glass designer, René Lalique, in the 1920s. The three garnitures are in the form of glass bottles and are called a flacon, which means perfume. On the side of the bottles are little stylized miosotis, meaning forget-me-not. Despite the slight condition issue with the garniture, they still have a retail value of around $8,000. The owner and her husband bought this lithograph for $400 at the auction. It's a Spokane bird's eye view lithograph made in 1905. Visitors to the owner's office get amazed by its details. It's created through lithography, utilizing multiple plates for various colors. It showcases Spokane's majestic falls, exuding drama including an inset of Fort Wright. It was created after the American Civil War. Mapmakers mapped communities, then depicted streets and landmarks from an angled perspective. Its estimated value can range from $5,500 to $6,000. Oh, well, thank you. So, yeah. That's thank great. This man struck a gold mine with the 1909 Chinese seal he brought to the show, which he had attained from a man who worked at the Hong Kong consulate office in the late 1970s to early 1980s, situated in Wichita, Kansas. The Chinese seals consist of one jade seal and three soapstone seals, and he purchased them for $700 at the time. As a mark of imperial authority, the seal holds great esteem in China which is indicated in the seal having the residue of cinnabar resin paste underneath. Looking at the seal, you will see the exquisiteness in carving which speaks about their worth in today's market. The agate seal with charming rats or mice is worth about $1,500 to $2,000. The jade and the squirrel-shaped one would be around $1,000 to $1,500, while the cicada seal would cost between $400 to $600. The guest showcased a sampler created by her great-great-grandmother, Nancy J. Hughes, at the age of 16. The sampler she did when she was 16 years old and lived in Tennessee. And then after she married, she and her husband heard that there was real rich cotton farming in Dallas. Nancy was named as the first practicing Methodist in Dallas County. The sampler displayed her maiden name, along with M.C. Tennessee, and the date, 1833. The embroidery work included an intricate floral border and a depiction of a charming house. The appraiser admired Nancy's skills and discipline as a young woman. Additionally, the guest brought photographs of Nancy with her children and historical documents. 
The overall estimated value was around $15,000. I better watch out for my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> the guest showcased a leaded glass lamp made by the company Gorham in 1905. The company, known for its silverware, also operated a leaded shade studio in Providence, Rhode Island. The value estimated for the item ranged between ten to $15,000. Well, that's, that's what I was hoping to hear.